project is the bathroom. Um, as you can see, I've already started doing the edging, which there are like two things that I hate when it comes to decorating the house or um, like when you move in and have to do stuff. Um, hanging drapery rods and edging and paint. It is so time consuming <laughs> to do the edging and you have to be tedious and meticulous and um, anyway, so I am starting to do that. Um, so right now the walls are, the camera's not really picking it up, but this is actually like kind of like a yellow, creamy, butter colored um, white, if you will. Not a fan of that color. Um, and so I wanted to choose something that was quite dark. Um, I do have natural light in the bathroom, so that helps. I'm gonna get, continue to finish the edging and then we're going to start painting and then hopefully I'll have this done today. Um, and then I'll show you guys the final result. project I'm working on is my kitchen. So currently it is this red color. Red is not my color. Um, so I'm going to be painting over that. Um, but what we're doing on the wall behind me as well as this wall behind me here is um, we're going to be doing like a faux shiplap look on it. So um, right now what I'm doing is I'm going to put a coat of the color that I'm going to paint the shiplap behind where the shiplap is going to go just so that way if there's any gaps the red doesn't peek through. So I'm going to do that on this wall as well. Um, the soffit above, I was planning to remove that, however when I um, put a hole in it to see what was behind it, it's a big massive wood beam and then it also is just open to the attic so I didn't want to have to deal with um, taking that out, putting in drywall, refinishing the ceiling. Um, and so while it's not my favorite thing to have there, um, we're just gonna deal with it um, and I'll incorporate it into the design. What I did is I went to the hardware store and I bought um, a bunch of, uh, these are actually fencing panels. Um, so you'd use them for when you're doing fencing outside. Um, the reason why I went with this is because it's, cheaper. Um, you get a pretty thin profile on the board too, so I'm not adding a ton of thickness to the wall um, or heaviness when it comes to securing it to the wall. And then, um, you know, the thing with these boards is they are a little rough, so you certainly can sand them down. Otherwise, uh, the rough look I kind of like. It makes it a little bit more rustic looking. So um, I cut off, so these actually have like a dog ear top to them, so I cut a straight cut on all of the boards. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put them on the wall and then we're going to do a coat of this taupe over the boards um, to give it a nice finished look. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> okay, so one thing I wanted to point out when you're putting these on the wall um, is obviously you're going to have portions where you're going to have a full plank running the wall and then you're going to have a portion where you're going to have to cut. So as you can see from here to the corner is not going to be a full plank. So what you want to do is take a full plank, you measure it, and then you cut the size that you need and then it will fit right in there. Now something that you want to do with the piece that you don't need from that full plank is you're going to take this piece and start at the opposite end of the wall. So the reason why you want to do that is because then it will stagger where your lines are so you don't have lines um, where the boards are meeting lining up perfectly um, so I'm gonna take the piece that I cut off that I'm not using in this portion of the wall and start on the opposite end with it and then work my way this way and then come up to this row and work that way so you want to keep doing that again so it alternates your um, joint lines the thing I wanted to mention is when we go to use the brad nailer to attach this to the wall 
Um, when you start your first row at the bottom of the wall, you want to mark where your studs are. So this is going to help you make sure that you're driving into something other than just the drywall. Um, you can certainly drive into drywall, however, just be forewarned that your boards may pop off the wall over time, so you might have to be constantly putting more nails in them to secure them to the wall. Um, but once you mark your first row at the bottom of the wall, you can just follow where your brad nails are in the row below to then find your spots on the next row up. So um, you can't really see it here, I'm sure, but there's two brad nails in this plank here, so then I'm just going to line that up on this one here. Right, got the last piece in. Um, as you can see, we are all the way done. So I already started painting that wall um, yesterday and then the lower half of this and then we've got to just finish painting all of this. Um, a couple things I wanted to point out. So this, <laughs> um, I wanted to put the light switch on the outside of the wall and you can get, um, uh, electrical box extenders. However, my house was built in the 60s and the electrical box that's in there is smaller than what the extender, um, the extender won't fit in it because it's too small. So I had to make the decision because I don't want to redo a bunch of wiring and I'd have to rip open the wall to replace the electrical box. So um, I decided to just leave it in set. Um, so I'm gonna clean up the edges on that a little bit and make it look better. Uh, it is what it is. Um, I did, however, with this outlet, um, as you can see here, it's not finished, but this is the extender, the blue piece. So it allows me to put this outlet flush on the wall so this won't be inset, which uh, for whatever reason, the extender fit in that outlet box, but not the switch. Um, a couple other things I wanted to point out are I'm gonna be coming in and trimming this up a little bit because as you can see, I overextended in some areas, but um, eventually I'm gonna be coming back and putting in um, thick trim around the door and the window over here. So everything's kind of a raw edge right now. So that's not done. Um, and then over here, um, I'm going to be putting in some wood beam columns to make an archway. Uh, this is the kitchen kind of entryway from the garage and then the living room over there. So kind of giving it a little bit of an architectural detail um, as well as a, a separation. Um, so those are kind of the things where I'll probably have some raw edges like this until I get around to doing the trim, which hopefully will be soon. Um, and then also along the base, um, there'll be some nice four inch, I think I'm gonna do four inch um, uh, trim along the bottom that will then come up and wrap around the door and hide all of these raw edges and so on and so forth. So um, next step is to paint this wall. Alright, 
thread is gone. I am so excited. I, it, sorry if red is your color, it is not my color, um, especially that shade of red. If I was gonna go with a red, it would be a much deeper red, um, more on like the burgundy or Merlot color side, but that was just not me. So anyways, I did this, um, it's called, uh, I think, well, I'll put the color that I did on the walls uh, on the video here for you. Um, but I went ahead and got all of it done. So as you can see, we are done with the whole kitchen. So it is still drying. So I haven't put a lot of stuff back, but got everything painted. So I'm so excited because this is so much better than the red. There is a little bit of red still left. Um, because I'm going to be painting this the color that I do the hallway, so I wanted this to be lighter rather than have the dark gray-blue color come through. So, um, so yeah, so that is, was the last of the painting for the kitchen. Um, so I think what I'll do is probably move on to either the hallway or the living room next. Um, and then eventually I'll do a whole tour of all of the paint that I just did. And yeah, so I'm excited.